Well, the carousel keeps on rotating. The Houston Texans will be hanging on to a couple of key assistants after their big turnaround. Offensive coordinator Bobby Slug and quarterbacks coach Jared Johnson have agreed to new deals with the Texans. Slug was a candidate for both of the league's remaining head coaching vacancies with the Commanders and the Seahawks. And we now welcome in CBS Sports senior NFL insider Josina Anderson as we take a spin on the coaching carousel in the NFL. And I want to start with the Texans news. Bobby Slowick, highly touted as a potential head coach in the league, especially considering the two franchises that are left here with the vacancies. But what does his return mean for the development of C.J. Stroud and this Texans offense, especially trying to take those strides next season? Well, first and foremost, obviously, it makes C.J. Stroud very happy. Uh, Bobby Sloak was a key component in helping him to uh, mature and develop in his first year. We know that C.J. Stroud threw for over 4,000 yards, just the fifth rookie to do that, had the best interception touchdown ratio in the league at 23 to 5, and obviously was one of the coaches helping D'Amico Ryan's uh, full uh, staff there uh, make the Texans uh, win the AFC South for the first time since uh, 2019. So there you have that, and we we know that Bobby Slowick uh, did interview uh, for multiple head coaching vacancies, including the Commanders, the Seahawks, the Panthers, the Titans, and the Atlanta Falcons. Now, obviously, the Panthers, the Titans, and Falcons have already filled those jobs. Uh, Washington and Seattle remain open. So uh, while he's definitely coveted in terms of coming back to Houston, uh, if you are a vigilant agent, you know that it's also a good time to declare the return, uh, particularly if you're not necessarily sure the remaining teams are going to uh, pick you. So what I'm saying is it's a great time to control the narrative. Uh, now you are able to highlight something that is factual. You're coming back. You are getting a raise, uh, which is deserved for uh, Bobby Slowick. And, and at the same time, in, in the event that Washington or Seattle weren't going to go with you, you make that announcement prior to those teams making that announcement as well. So all of those things go together. <laughs> yeah, return, Slowick returning I think is really important, especially considering you want that continuity for a very young quarterback, a developing quarterback, and especially with this Texans team that's taken strides in 2023-2024. All right, let's move on. The Detroit Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson is staying in the Motor City. The 37-year-old was considered to be among the top candidates to take over as head coach in Washington and had two interviews with the Seahawks but now they'll have to look elsewhere with Johnson apparently deciding to run it back with Dan Campbell in Detroit next season. Okay, now, Josina, with Johnson returning to Detroit, that's a team that is, I, in my opinion, I believe built to return to the postseason. This was a young Lions team with a lot of rookies who played big roles in their success, including what they were able to do in the playoffs. But just how much further do you think Johnson can take this team heading into his third season as the offensive coordinator? Well, first and foremost, it just provides Jared Goff familiarity, um, consistency, especially in a year where he's taken so many leaps and bounds and that offense ranked in, in the top five and top ten in so many important, notable offensive categories. So we know that he's very happy uh, to have him come back. And, and then secondly, you know, he was a hot commodity on here as far as just recognizing that he was a part of helping the Detroit Lions to make, you know, the playoffs for the first time in uh, 30 years. And then not only that, but to um, obviously advance all the way to the NFC Championship round, though they fell short, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, some interesting things transpired today as the Washington Commanders were set uh, to fly and interview uh, Ben Johnson today. Matter of fact, they were mid-air when they found out that Ben Johnson was not going to do the interview. And uh, another network at ESPN also uh, saying today that the asking price was uh, problematic in those talks, which is something that CBS Sports, yours truly, told you about three and four weeks ago. And, and those are things that, uh, you know, are natural. They're not, you know, uncommon uh, when you can't necessarily agree on a price. But just to give further context here, you know, most first-time head coaches are making under $10 million, uh, in the league. And you have coaches even like uh, the John Harbaugh's and Mike Tomlin's are, who are reportedly, because they keep the coaches' salaries more private, said to be more in like the 12 ranges all the way to the Bill Belichick and Sean Payton's, which are, you know, approaching the 20s and things. So then now to presumably be asking for a number in between that, which is what I was reporting weeks ago, is is is, uh, is obviously going to put ownership and people, you know, um, you know, on their on their heels. But 
There is also a concept called leverage. If you have leverage and you are hot, then you can ask what you want. And, 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 and the point is to try to maybe meet somewhere in the middle or get closer to what you are asking for. That's how a player like Odell Beckham Jr. ends up making a, a one-year $15 million uh, deal going up to 18 because he leveraged the fact at the time that Lamar wasn't signed. So it's not a foreign concept. It's not necessarily saying someone is bad or anything like that. But it does just highlight sometimes that even though you are hot, you can't necessarily come to an agreement. But what I do think is interesting as part of the whole thing surrounding Ben Johnson is the additional note, because we just noted uh, in the other topic about uh, Bobby Slowick that he did get a raise in his return, whereas uh, uh, at least ESPN is reporting, and I don't know this independently as far as, you know, being able to confirm it myself, but we know that Adam Schefter is a notable insider, uh, that he is also reporting that um, that there was not an adjustment to his contract, that being Ben Johnson, in order to return. Now, I just think that, you know, that also kind of points to where the leverage is with both sides, you know, with the Lions and the Commanders at this time. But nonetheless, he is coming back. He is a phenomenal play caller. He is a phenomenal offensive mind, still growing in, in that respect. And I'm sure Jared Goff is very pleased to have him back. Yeah, a very interesting situation considering not, you know, it's not 100% certain, but considering if there was or was not that raise in his decision to return to Detroit. But I want to take a step back and, and mention what you said, how the Commanders were mid Air, finding out this news uh, about Johnson deciding to, uh, you know, stay in Detroit. But with that being said, what's next for Washington? Because if they had their mind and it appears like it was set on him, where do they go from here? Well, you know, Washington, uh, let's just say league sources and the commanders were very um, diligent uh, earlier today about putting out that while uh, he was a top candidate, they weren't necessarily locked on him. You're going to have a lot of things coming out now, obviously, that it didn't work out. But the fact of the matter is, is that they, uh, the Washington commanders had interviewed Bobby Slowick earlier uh, last week. Um, they had interviewed Dan Quinn and were actually done with that interview pretty early in the day. That was in person. And then they had had uh, interviewed uh, Mike McDonald, who was a defensive coordinator from the Ravens, and Anthony Weaver, who was also part of that Ravens uh, defensive staff as well yesterday. So now the question is, what are they going to do? Uh, the interesting thing is that the remaining candidates, not named Ben Johnson, all of their agents have even increased leverage now because the pool is, is shorter. The question is whether the Washington commanders are going to go with experience, or are they going to go with the up and coming, you know, hot, you know, um, newcomer, so to speak, and prospect with that regard and it'll be very interesting now even though uh, McDonald is you know the up-and-coming prospect his defenses uh, have performed very dominantly this year for Baltimore whereas you have Quinn who is obviously like a guy like that just for example who has been to also multiple Super Bowls and obviously is a little older as well so this brain trust from the commander is really gonna have to get together uh, this evening we'll see if a decision comes out today later this week or whenever they uh, want want to pull the trigger and see ultimately what they want to do. But one advantage in hurrying up and making this announcement for people like me so we can, you know, stop talking about this and move on to the Super Bowl, but whatever, you know what I'm saying, it's all, it's all good. But my point is, is that, you know, there, there are a lot of support staff that are still out there that everyone's competing for to, you know, join their staff. So the longer you wait, the longer other coaches are going to other staff. So you don't want to take too long, but an interesting decision for sure for the Washington Commanders. Yeah, absolutely. Time is ticking and we are inching closer and closer as we start looking ahead to the combine teams trying to get their rosters together but the word you keep bringing up leverage and it makes a lot of sense but moving on how about the Steelers they're expected to hire former Falcons coach Arthur Smith as their offensive coordinator according to NFL Network Smith ran the Titans offense before going to Atlanta he replaces Matt Canada as the full-time OC in Pittsburgh now Josina there has been a lot of people calling out Pittsburgh for their offense this past season or rather lack thereof when I'm considering their offense. Before Smith's time in Atlanta, as I mentioned, spent time as Tennessee's offensive coordinator where they saw plenty of success with their ground game. And I'm looking at Derrick Henry, namely, but now coaching guys like Najee Harris, Jalen Warren and others. Do you feel that this is the right fit to get this offense going while also helping develop Kenny Pickett, who I feel like is still a bit of a work in progress? Great context there with all of that. And it's, it's the right fit for Arthur Smith because he needs a job. 
So let's just start with that reality. <laughs> now it becomes, does it further illuminate your resume? What I think is interesting, you know, with this uh, decision here, and I was providing this context before we, you know, came on as well, is that when Arthur Smith was in Atlanta, uh, Calais Campbell, who obviously is a defensive lineman uh, for the Falcons, had told me that he chose the Falcons over the Jets because all the times that he studied defense, he said one of the hardest offenses to go up against was that of Arthur Smith when he was, as you mentioned, the offensive coordinator for the Tennessee Titans. But then you come over to the Atlanta Falcons and you have three straight seasons of 7-10 and 10 and ultimately goes back to the truth that we know in the National Football League, which is that you need a quarterback. And the Falcons spent a lot of time last season telling all these you know, free agents that Desmond Ritter was going to take this next step. And it doesn't mean that he can't, not panning him. It just didn't necessarily pan out. And the other thing helping them, as I do, I'll Trans, you know, uh, transition here to the Steelers is that it, it, it's within the NFC South and you're collecting wins from the NFC South. So then, you know, what would the record have been if they were in a harder division? So now, to your point, he comes over to the Pittsburgh Steelers and you're dealing with, um, you know, a quarterback that still is trying to take that next step that hasn't necessarily convinced everybody, you know, in that organization and in that city. And then also where the previous offensive coordinator couldn't necessarily um, have all the pieces come together and work the way that he wanted not necessarily saying it was Matt Canada's fault too but it is a interesting situation because um, it's not necessarily the most blue 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 chip um, you know players that he has when you compare it to rosters like the 49ers and things like that that he has to work with but you know the best coaches make some of the players that are not necessarily, you know, the biggest household names and still have them come together and play. And even though they might not be the most elite, it's also the ability to have them be synergistic and play together and then rise together as a unit. So he has his work cut out for him. I'm definitely not going to say it's the easy slice of cake. Um, but that being said, um, it's certainly an additional challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, it, it all makes sense, especially when you have that one key piece on that offense and that's the quarterback and like I said Kenny Pickett still I think there's some questions surrounding him but how will he and Arthur Smith like you mentioned all this synergy and bringing them together it's going to be quite an interesting thing to watch as we prepare for next season but not just yet because we still have Super Bowl ahead of us so you make sure you go ahead and get prepared for Super Bowl 50 that you can catch on CBS Josina as always we appreciate the insight thank you so much no problem and well it was a blank slate when we looked at this graphic. Give us maybe about two weeks ago, and now it's starting to fill up. Teams starting to find their coaches. Teams filling out their offensive coordinators, those vacancies now. Last two teams standing, still looking for that head coaching candidate, that perfect fit for these teams. The Seahawks, who moved on from Pete Carroll, who will now serve in-house as an advisor, still looking for that head coaching candidate and the commanders, as Josina Anderson just mentioned. Moving on from Ron Rivera, and who will be filling those shoes, likely to come in the next few days as the calendar of the NFL calendar continues to roll.